Hey guys, here we are in my garden. This is um, the second part of our catch up cut flower patch weekend. And um, I wanted to give you a little tour of my garden and how it's all set up and um, what I've got going on here. Just so that you can get a feel for yourself and hopefully this will give you some confidence to um, perhaps get sowing and growing yourself. So this, when I, in January 2020, this was just a patch of grass. And, um, <laughs> excuse me, as I fell in love with, um, fell in love with the idea really of growing cut flowers for myself, I started off by buying a couple of these two meter by one meter raised bed frames from uh, just online and filling them with compost. And so I had, the two over there you can see in the corner, the first two here and the next two here. And that's what I started with. I filled them with compost. I started sowing my seeds. I started planting out and I started growing. And then I got obsessed. And so my garden beds have grown and grown and grown and grown um, <laughs> over the last couple of years. So I just want to give you a talking through of the layout and what I've got here. I'm going to show you the cold frames. I'm going to show you the greenhouse. I'm going to show you the other bit of the garden that I've got. Um, and show you what how what the layout is, what's going on. And I think you can probably type in questions. So type me a hello if you're here. You can see I've got some people watching. Um, this will be recorded and then you'll be able to watch it back afterwards. But you can I think you can type in your questions, you can type in your hellos, you can let me know you're here. Uh, that would be lovely. So here, and I won't go into too much detail because I'll just probably bore you, but so here, what I've got here is up against my wall. I don't know if you can see this. I've got some netting. This last year was where I grew all my sweet peas. But this year, even though I've planted them, every time I plant them, something comes and eats them. I can't work out what it is, but I've almost given up on trying to replant sweet peas here. Uh, you have to bear with me because it's windy and I hope you can hear me okay. Um, and it's going to be rainy soon as well in a minute. So I won't be out here for too long. So these are some of the um, plants that I have um, sown earlier this year in January and February. And um, they have got this big, they are hardy annuals. So they have all been planted out now into the beds here. And they are here to grow on. This is Gadesha, this is Cynoglossum. These are from our January flower kits. I've got some uh, little calendula there. I've got some gypsophilia here. Um, and these are hardy, so it doesn't matter if we have a few frosty nights, uh, they're going to be fine. So anything that's a hardy annual plant, plant it out in the garden as soon as it gets big enough, right? So, you know, if it's this kind of size, it's big enough to get planted out in the garden. If it's a hardy annual, it can handle the frost. If it's a half hardy annual, don't plant them out yet, okay, until after your last frost date, which is going to be probably for most of you towards the end of May, early June. Okay, no need to rush with your half hardies. If they get any frost, they'll just die. So these are hardy annuals. So I'll show you how you harden them off, but they're planted out and they're, they're getting on here great in this windy, wet, cold, nasty weather. Over here, this lushness that I have going on here, these are my cornflowers, aren't they awesome? I've had one flower so far from them and they just look amazing. So these are all plants that are hardy annuals but I sowed them in autumn this year. Now, when I first started, I didn't know about sowing in autumn and I only started in spring. So all my plants were this size, right? This time last year, all my plants were this size. And I still managed to get armfuls and armfuls and over a hundred posies to give away. So it doesn't matter if you're only just starting out now with tiny flowers, you'll be amazed. These will be flowering by the summer. But when you start in autumn, which is what I did this year, you can see some of my plants are nearly as big as me here. Um, look how healthy and big and chunky and strong these plants are. So these were all sown in August and September, um, early October, and then they were all planted out here before the frost started. So they were all planted out in like October time. And so they've overwintered here. Sometimes I've thrown some fleece over when it's got really cold, but because they've been out in the cold, they have grown really, really big, strong roots. They're very, really vigorous plants. You can see they're probably a bit, I didn't realize quite how big they were gonna be. So they're probably planted a little close together, but this is just gonna be a mountain of flowers. So this is my Ami Magus, for example. I mean, it's just phenomenal compared to my spring sowing. Um, I'm very impressed, but if you're growing along with us, 
Um, don't worry, I'll give you the cues when it's time to sow these. And this time next year, this is what your garden is going to look like. Look at them all. I'm really excited. These are going to be flowering so, so soon. You can see the, the cornflowers have got all the buds on. They're about to start going. So I've just put some string around these because it was so windy last weekend. Everything else I've kind of managed to net so that it's growing through these nets. And there's an article on my blog about how to do that so that they're all uh, nice and strong. These are my autumn sown ranunculus. Beautiful, aren't they? Whoa. And um, beautiful white ones I've got here as well. So ranunculus and anemones. Gosh, it really is lovely. So here are my anemones. Now I should have cut all of these, I, but I was gonna cut them and I thought, no, I'm gonna leave them all to show them to you. How gorgeous they are all here. So these were sown in autumn in my greenhouse. They have been grown on outside and they've had fleece. Uh, I put some fleece that I just peg onto this with clothes pegs at night when I know it's going to be frosty to cover them over. Now, originally there was a little mini greenhouse, plastic greenhouse thing here. If you've seen my garden previously, which um, just ripped in the first wind really it was useless. So that was my plan was to kind of grow them as if they were undercover. Um, but I didn't. I, they, they've been pretty exposed. They are maybe not as tall as like if you're a proper flower grower, um, but they're perfect for jam jars and they're perfect for the handfuls of flowers you'll see all over my Instagram. That's what these, where these babies come from. So when you're cutting these, by the way, you want to cut them when they're kind of like this. right? You think, oh, I want to cut them when they're like this, but it's a little bit too late. They'll only last about five minutes. But if you cut them when they're like this, still in bud form, um, you'll get a really long vase life from them. Gorgeous, gorgeous flowers. Can't wait to grow them again. Uh, here I've got a variety of poppies growing and a hell of a lot of weeds, but I can't tell which are the poppies and which are the weeds yet. So I'm just waiting to see when they flower and I'll figure that bit out later. Here are some um, plants that, I, that I've planted, some phacelia that we sowed in February, some scabiosa. So again, these are plants that I sowed in the spring. So they're still tiny, but you can see you can put them out in the garden when they're pretty small. It's my Bells of Ireland there, my Phacelia here. You can put them out when they're pretty small. They're frost hardy, so they'll do fine. They're happier out here, actually. And here are my other autumn sown half, um, hard, sorry, hardy annuals. So again, similar to the bed over here. My Cerinthi here have been flowering for a good sort of month or so now. And I've taken loads of cuttings from these already. And again, I sowed these in spring last year and they were a bit wimpy. And every time I put them in a bouquet, they just kind of snapped. But these are, they just, they're performing so well. They look beautiful. The bees love them. My God, look at them. I mean, they're just the most gorgeous things. Serinthi, that is. Um, I've got scabiosa growing here. Look at it. This has been out all over winter, all through the snow, the wind, everything looks like a lettuce. So healthy. Um, yeah, so you can see, I mean, they got a bit bashed about. These got a bit bashed about by, these are my corn cockles. And they got a bit bashed about by the wind because I hadn't got this second layer of netting on. So I have a layer down here, like a lower layer here, but I hadn't got a second layer on. And the winds last week, they knocked half of these over. And so I've had to go around and put the netting on after the fact, like after the horse has bolted, if you like. So I've kind of had to drape it over the top of all of these plants so it can carry on growing through. And then when it is windy in here, it'll, they'll be absolutely fine. So just come around here. So I have a couple of roses here. These are, this is where I planted all my narcissi. So I've picked all of these. They are, they are over now, but I'm letting their foliage die off so that I can pull up their bulbs and I'll actually plant them down into the garden down there next year, uh, rather than them taking up a whole bed. These ones are just about to bloom, so they're slightly later. And this bed here was all tulips, all of which I've picked and pulled up. There's just these ones here. These, I told you I was gonna tell you about beautiful tulips. These are called Amazing Grace, and they look like peonies when they bloom. Definitely get onto Farmer Gracie website and um, get yourself some of these. They are just breathtaking, absolutely breathtaking. 
So I've loved growing tulips here. That's been my first year I've grown them. So uh, with these, I pull them up each year. I'm growing them as annuals. This bed will soon be clear for more um, plants to go in soon. And here's our sweet pea frames. So uh, we're experimenting. I wanted a sweet pea wall this year. So my husband's built me this out of old pallets and a bit of wire, a bit of netting. And you can see the sweet peas are, are doing great there. So let me show you the other part of the garden. Here's that tulip, by the way. Let me just show you. So I can't pause the video so you get to see my garden. So here is, look at that. That's what she blooms into. This one is a little bit old now. This is like, I don't know, 10 days old. My God, isn't she gorgeous? I not believe that's a tulip. That's the one I just showed you, the Amazing Grace. And then here's my other sweet pea setup. So you might have seen this on my Instagram where I've just got them in pots with canes and then I've just put some strings to just give them an extra bit of something to grow up and they are thriving there. Oh, I can see all your hearts. Hi, Fiona. Yeah, Fiona was here having coffee. We had our first little project coffee morning here. Um, yesterday, in fact. So these are my cold frames. So cold frame is somewhere that you would move your plants into after they've been in the greenhouse or after they've been in the, if you've grown white plastic crates, which many of our growers do, you can move them into a cold frame. And this is like a halfway house between the greenhouse and the big outdoors. So what you'll see in here, both these are blown shut in the wind actually. Oh, so I've got all sorts going in here. There's my evening scented stocks if you've been growing along with us. So they're just hardening off now. I've got some perennial plants as well, some borage. And so what I would do with these is they would move into here. I would open these up every day to get make sure I get lots of breeze in. Um, so they don't get um, too hot in here because they do get still get really hot. And then when I'm hardening off, what that means is after they get big enough um, in the greenhouse, and you want to get, get them ready for planting outside, you want to harden them off. So you put them outside to be exposed to the, the sun and the wind and toughen up a bit, just for a few hours every day. It's my garden cat, she follows me around everywhere. Um, just so they get exposed to the weather before you plant them out. So do that for seven to 10 days, out in the day, back in at night, out in the day, back in at night, out in the day, back in at night. Um, or in if it's windy, horrible and nasty and you think you might kill all your plants. Today they're having a bit of a day in. Today, what have I got in here? Oh yeah, so here I've got some more stocks, uh, some more stocks, some euphorbia, which are too small to go out, but they're just out here for the moment. I'm going to shut the cat in the cold frame. I think she can still get out through all the gaps because it needs restapling. So I'm just going to walk you over to where the greenhouse is so you can see what I've got going on there. And so apologies that you have to come all the way around the driveway with me. Um, <coughs> I can't kind of pause the video and start it again, otherwise I'll just lose you all, I think. So I have another bit of the garden that I've tucked away around the corner because it's made of mainly green plastic. So uh, none of us want to see this from the house, really. There goes the garden cat. She loves me coming around here. So this is, now the door's shut on this at the moment because it's so windy today. But let me just show you. Oh, cat's not helping. So this is my little she shed, which is, um, I don't have a proper greenhouse. And um, I was potting up inside the house in the kitchen. I was doing it in the garage. And I got fed up with doing everything in the dark and the, and the muck and all the rest of it. And so this is my little hidey hole place with all my compost and my potting. And I can put on my Radio 4 and sit here and potter away for hours. This is also at the moment where I've got all my dahlias. So if you guys are growing dahlias, this is what mine look like at the moment. I have some non-starters who are waiting to see if they do anything. I have some thrivers that are going great guns at the moment. And I have some that are just starting off, tiny little shoots. So I've got all of these dahlias going on here at the moment. Now these, you can't plant out until after your last frost because they will just die. So look after them, keep them frost free, throw a fleece over them at night if it's going to get cold. Um, and in June, we'll plant all these out. We'll pinch them, which means that we're going to 
take off the tips, the main tips here. So we get really bushy, flowery plants. And we're going to plant them out at the beginning of June. I'll show you where I'm going to do that. So I keep the door shut on this one because otherwise I think it would actually blow away, which I know some of you have had. Uh, right, so I now have, I used to have this one little greenhouse and I, and I bought another one. <laughs> it's terrible. Once you start gardening, you can't stop. So I won't tell you what everything is in here, but what you can see is I've got a mixture of tiny little seedlings that have germinated and been pricked out and they're now growing on. Some that are a bit more ready to move to the cold frame. This is my little shelf of stuff needs to be done with these. They need to be, I don't know, potted on or... See, I've got some that are too big and some that are too small. So I'd have popped some on and not others. These are all my sunflowers. So they're all getting ready again. These are all half hard. <laughs> I think I'm standing in this, so I think I would actually lose it right now. Um, these can't be planted. I hope you can hear me over the noise. Um, so these are all half hardies. They can't go out. So you can see there are all different stages. Okay, we're back. Sorry, the internet there got blown away or something. So I've got sweet peas even now. I'm just starting off as a bit of an experiment. I know it's a bit late, but I'm going for it. Um, I've got a lovely gift from our coffee morning yesterday of a Bell and Saucer plant. Thank you, Debbie, I think that was. Um, or Fiona, I can't remember. Thank you. Anyway, they gave it to me. And um, so I've got some tiny little uh, straw flowers and all sorts of things. So I've got seedlings going on here. And to me, it feels like May is a bit of a waiting game, right? So everything just sits here, kind of about this size for ages. And you think, come on already. How am I ever going to plug out? Look at you, you're tiny, get on with it. And you can get quite impatient with them, but um, it, it, it's fine. That's, that's what happens in May, right? And then suddenly it starts to warm up and everything starts going crazy. My other little greenhouse. Now everything's just been sitting here round about this size for what feels like ages. And um, here's my Icelandic poppies. If those of you are growing poppies, the Icelandic poppies along with me. So they're still tiny, but they've just started to go and they will they will beef up soon. I've got my malope. It's still tiny, look. You're like, come on, I've got a space for you in the garden. Get bigger. Uh, I've got some flocks here. I've got some second sowing of cosmos and baby cosmos. And then I've just got mountains and mountains and mountains of cosmos going. Mainly because I'm growing for lots of other people, not just me, but... You can see all the cosmos, so they're, they're pretty small still. You're like, can't believe this is ever going to give me armfuls of flowers, but they will, I promise you. Okay, you don't need to pinch these out yet. Leave them alone. They'll just keep growing. They're fine. I've got snapdragons here. Come on, get bigger. They've all been pinched. And they're just waiting here to get bigger. So today is actually a really good, I know it seems like a crappy, horrible weather day, but what I realise is, oh, brilliant. I can actually water during the day rather than first thing in the morning or in the evening which is when you might expect that you have to um, because otherwise you're going to scorch all your plants you can take the time and do it in the middle of the day today because there is no sun so i did a good watering this morning here's my zinnias those of you that are growing the zinnias in the may kit with me i sowed these last week look at them here they go so they these have because they've germinated right some of them not all of them but some of them have they are out in the greenhouse now Okay, you get them off your kitchen windowsill, otherwise you will get leggy plants. Here's all my spring sown ranunculus. They're just having a bit of an outside day today. Again, really small, but there's no rush. It really isn't. Now, this is my other bit of my where my garden started to expand last year. So please excuse all the cardboard that is just there to kill off the grass so that I can create paths in between all of these beds. Doesn't look very pretty, I know. Um, so um, I had these, I had just this bed last year, it was the first one I put in. And then I built more and then I built more and then I built more. And that bed at the end was all my dahlias. In fact, these two beds were all my dahlias last year. So here, just to tell you what I've got going on, this is where all my stocks will go when they get a bit bigger. Here, you can see that I've got all my biennials. 
So these are all the plants that I planted in, I sowed in June and July last year. So we've got foxgloves, we've got honesty, we've got um, sweet william, uh, we have got wallflowers. Look at these gorgeousness. We've got um, sweet rocket, which is just about to blossom. Um, I've got some Canterbury bells and some poppies down here. I've got some cornflowers, which aren't biennials. But these, we sow them in the summer. We plant them out. They sit there all winter. They look really bedraggled. Some of them won't make it. I'll show you the fails as well, keeping it real. I'm waiting to see what happens with these. Some of them won't make it, but most of them will. And then these are your sort of early spring bloomers. Okay, so this is what I've been picking from, along with my, to go with my daffodils. But if you're growing along with us, don't worry, I'll let you know when we get to our June flower kit, we're going to start sowing um, some of the biennials. So just, just keep following along and you'll be doing it with me. So you don't have to worry about timing. But um, And by the way, if you're confused about, well, how do I know what to put where and how many beds I need and all that kind of thing, um, there's a workshop I'm running next weekend. Uh, which is all about planning the grow to give garden so that's where we like map out all of all of your beds and your growing space and work out what can go where that's on the floral project website this year this is going to be all dahlias this is going to be all cosmos this is going to be all sunflowers and this is going to be all zinnias i've decided that's my plan so again they're waiting until either the plants are big enough you can see my zinnias have only just germinated or um, until it gets to be after the first frost and I can plant some things out there. This is my little little three metres of beds. I'm coming here out from the wind. Three metres of beds. Garden cat loves it in here, don't you, Billy? Um, that I wanted to, I kept seeing people who were sowing and growing inside. I do Uh, obviously got terrible internet reception and so I'm just pausing so I think we're disappearing these are my autumn sown snapdragons so again nearly as big as me hopefully this one will flower I think this is really my only main one that remained as I sowed them in the autumn because what happened in here was I sowed all these ranunculus and all these anemones no all ranunculus in here and what happened was something came in so they all got really big and bushy and so then something came in and mowed them all to the ground so there was nothing here all nothing here at all so i totally gave up all the all the snapdragons everything eaten i don't know what it was and so i gave up entirely on here i had a good cry gave up entirely ignored it and then look what happened they kind of came back and so they're not the most strongest beautifulest of flowers but they are really trying. And I don't know about you, but I could still use these next to my desk with the cat joining in. So that is, guys, a little tour of, I don't know if you can see me if I turn it this way around, maybe, maybe not. Uh, hopefully you can. I can't tell what you're looking at. But that is a little tour of the garden um, that I've got going on here. So like I said before, I started off with nothing just grass i built my raised beds on top of the grass i haven't done any digging so please do look on my blog and i'll show you how i did that using charles dowding's no dig method built all of these straight on top of grass put some cardboard on put some compost in planted into it um and for me i think the biggest thing stopping me starting was um how do i get flower beds so i don't have any flower beds here at all so i've built all the flower beds um figured out like what you can sow in every month which is what our flower kits are and so I'm really hoping that this video today is encouraging you to see um, what's possible to show you that you can just you just need I don't know like you had four meters of, of room to grow flowers in you could grow enough you could grow every one of our flower kits if you just you know had one of each plant so if you've got loads of space if you've hardly got any space some some people are just growing in containers even if you just give away one handful of flowers this summer as part of the floral project, it would be really, really lovely to have you on board. 
So um, I'm going to stop the video now, go inside and have a nice cup of tea to warm up. Um, but I hope this has kind of inspired you as to what's possible from going from zero to having, you know, a pretty sweet little cut flower patch, really. Um, the, the sense of achievement that you get from doing something like this is incredible. And from going from knowing nothing to slowly learning and trusting your intuition and figuring it out and messing it up and picking yourself back up and carrying on again and learning and it's it's amazing you do, and doing all of that so that you can give your flowers to people who need them it's just really really rewarding you're going to meet new friends on the way you're going to um have people to pick you up when you cry because that's something everything in your polytunnel um it's going to be a blast so i hope you join us on this journey um if you've never sown anything before you can get one of our flower kits and start today. You're not too late and you will have flowers this summer. So hopefully that's inspired you. Leave me plenty of comments. I'm sorry I haven't had a chance to answer all the questions as we've been going um, today. I'll have a quick scan as we, as I walk back to the house. I'll have a look and see at your comments. Oh, I love hearing the birds in the background. I know it's great, isn't it? Gosh, it always looks a lot, it's a lot prettier, a lot less pretty than it looks on Instagram, that's for sure here as well with all the mud and everything in the rain so I'm just looking at all your questions um lots of thank yous that's very sweet where do you buy the netting I've got a link on my website actually so when you um if you if you go to the floralproject.co.uk gosh look at the wind in the trees if you go to the floralproject.co.uk and go to the blog you'll see there's a video there all about how I've done all the support netting for my beds and um, it's got the link there to all of the netting so that you can you can find this um, you know I, we use it here to keep the deer out of this bit of the garden um, but mainly I use it for support netting for my sweet peas to grow up obviously it's plastic it's horrible plastic um, but the thing to do is make sure that once it's in you leave it in and you just keep using it year after year after year after year to get the most use you possibly can from it so I really hope you've enjoyed this today. Thank you very much for your love hearts. And um, we'll be back tomorrow with a Q&A call at 11 o'clock. If you join our community, um, you'll be able to get the links for that. So we'll be, we'll be there on Zoom at 11 o'clock tomorrow. I'll be talking all about the giving side of it. And I will be answering any questions you might have about anything you've seen here today. Uh, anything about the plants that you've got, any way I can help you so that you are sowing and growing and giving all your cut flowers. Okay, guys, take care. Bye.